Hey everybody, it's the usual spiel. I'm Mike Baird, drummer in the music business forever. So if you're in the drum stuff, or even if you're not in the drum stuff, there's going to be a great story. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of Mike's Drum Cubby. Welcome, Covers, to another episode of Mike's Drum Covey, the channel I created for you, the Covers. So today we got a great little drum. It's very cool, kind of unique. I've never seen kind of another one like it. I'm sure there's probably plenty of them out there. But then we got this great story at the end. It's a nice little short one, but it's a funny one. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so you'll want to stay tuned even if you're not into the drum stuff. So if you dig this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Send me comments. Always love to hear the comments. But without further delay of this whole freaking deal, let's get to the Tama 4x14 wood piccolo. Well, here you have it. The 4x14 Tama wood piccolo. I guess it's a piccolo. They call it a piccolo doesn't sound like a piccolo. It's got a lot more meat than a traditional piccolo. This is a maple shell. This is a drum that I acquired while I was at Tama, which was a great ride. I was with them for several years. And I think I found this at the warehouse and it was sitting up on a shelf. And I remember asking, hey, what's the story with this deal? My rep was Joe Hibbs, God rest his soul. Fantastic artist rep. Anyway, he said, well, take it home if you see if you dig it. So I took that and probably a couple other snare drums, and it's one that I kept in my collection. I used it actually quite a bit in the studio. It still sounds great. I still use it today. It's, it's just a neat little drum. It sounds really awesome. So here's the throw off. And then the butt end. There you have it. We got the 4x14 Tama Wood. So let's hear this. Okay, we're back. Would anybody like to guess the weight of this drum? Six pounds, 4.6 ounces. Fly away! <laughs> so, story kind of goes like this. When I got this drum, it was great and it sounded good, but then years later, I just decided I wanted to kind of tweak it. So I took it down to my tech, Chris Hoyer, and we checked the edges. The edges were a little funky, changed the snare wires, did all that, and that's what you hear it today. And it, it really is a great sounding little drum. But I, a, lot of, a lot of my drums, you know, I don't mess with, and I, I want to clarify this, you know, some drums I get and I like to kind of mess with them. And other drums, if they sound good, I kind of leave them alone. And when I fall out, I kind of in love with them. Then I want to tweak them a little bit that maybe I can make them better before I take them out of the roster and I put them in storage, you know, um, and I want to keep using them. I'll check it and recheck it, whatever. So now that's, you know, most of all the drums that I get, except if they're vintage or something like that, the edges are always like anything from DW, the edges are great or pork pie, the edges are great. Um, but I have a, a, a new little vintage drum that I got that was an older Rogers. And you know, Rogers were actually pretty good. But anyway, that's a sidebar, another story down the line. And I got a cubby on that one. So anyway, I took it down. We changed the wires. 
you know, and uh, change, you know, change, check the edges. And the edges were a little funky, but they cleaned them up, and it's and it's a great sounding drum. It's got a lot of body for what it is. All right, and now the little little story. So, you may have seen heard in another episode that I had. My first tour was with a group called the Friends of Distinction. It was two guys, two girls, um, Harry Elston and Floyd Butler, Diane Steinberg and Danny McCormick. So it was two girls, two guys. We're in Des Moines, Iowa, I think. And uh, somebody decides, hey, we're going to go to a ranch and we're going to ride horses. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a big horse rider, but, you know, okay, we're, we're going to go do that. We're going to do an outing. Somebody had invited us that came to, the, came to the concert and, you know, that's what we're going to do. So we show up at this ranch and it's out, you know, in the wilderness, really bitching. And so everybody's getting on a horse or whatever. Well, the, the only musicians that were there were myself and a bass player named Bill Von Ravensburg, a great player, whatever. And uh, so neither one of us are experienced writers, and the girls are kind of not experienced either. Harry is, he's ridden kind of some, and I guess Floyd, I don't know, he's like disappeared. We didn't see him. It's like, okay, so we get on the horse, and he goes, okay, we're going to go down this trail, and about then, this horse that Bill von Ravensburg on just bolts. I mean, man, well, this horse is going, and this guy's like, ah, oh, he's screaming, help, help, and he's bouncing up and down on the saddle, I got you. you know, it's like, and he can't stop, this horse is just going, I mean, like, like major, so this dude that's there, gets on this thoroughbred like like on the wild west just like jumps on it and just like takes off it and stops the horse and brings it back bill's like okay i'm done it's like i'm not i'm not doing this okay we'll get you another horse and i think they put him on another horse anyway so now we're going so it's it's me and him i think he was with us and the two girls and we're riding and riding it's pitching you know we're just kind of you know walking and you know talking and doing it it's really nice it was pretty outside well, we get to this kind of uh, a drop down and there's a ravine, you know, there's like a, a little river. And the river's just, you know, it's shallow. It's maybe a foot, maybe of water. And it's not some big stream or anything. So we go down this incline. It's pretty steep. We get down at the bottom and still no sign of Floyd Butler. It's like, wow, what happened to him? And so we're kind of standing in this little river thing. And the horses are kind of taking a drink because it was a little on the hot side hot outside temperature wise so all of a sudden it, it's like i don't know what caught my attention but it was like somebody blowing a horn of some like doo, 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 like some french horn <laughs> and i look up on the ridge like behind us right and here's floyd butler and he's dressed all in black and he's got a black hat and he's got this black beautiful horse and it's like silver bridle on it and saddle is like major like you know what the lone ranger or something right and he hauls ass down this down the slope and he's coming like right towards us and doesn't stop he just keeps going and when he does that all this mud and water goes all over all of us i mean we're just getting douched by this pummeled by this deal so anyway so he goes right up the other side and just disappears into the sunset, basically. It was like, man, it was like we're just caked with mud and water. It was, it was unbelievable. Anyway, we finally made it back. It was a great little ride. And then, you know, Floyd, we gave him a bunch of crap for, like, you know, putting crap all over us and mud and everything else. But it was actually pretty funny. But he looked like this studly guy, you know, this, like, it was just really amazing. A black cowboy. There you go, man. He looked amazing. Looked the part amazing. Anyway, so that's the end of the story. Uh, but anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope uh, you enjoyed the cubby, and thank you for coming and, and joining with us. So if you dig the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, send me a comment, please. And what do we always say? And that's it. And we'll see you in a minute. What do you want?